Hi everyone, and welcome to Johnson City Library Storytime. Our story today is the puzzle of the platypus. Bird? Reptile? Mammal? No one knew what to call it. The platypus is a furry, four-footed animal that lives in rivers near the eastern coast of Australia. It was well known to the early native Australians, the Aborigines, but it was new and curious. It was a new and curious animal to the first Europeans who came to explore and later settle. For scientists back in England, the process of discovering and understanding the platypus was so difficult that it went on for more than 80 years. Part of the problem was that each trip between Europe and Australia took more than a month at sea. More of the problem was in the animal's strange characteristics which had never been seen together in one animal. The first scientific description of the platypus was made from a preserved skin sent back to England. The report said, a perfect resemblance of the beak of a duck grafted on the head of a quadruped. A quadruped is a four-footed animal. There was some worry that the animal was a fake, that the specimens had been put together from parts of different kinds of animals. As other reports and other parts of the animal came to English scientists, the platypus became real, but even stranger. The back feet had pointy claws with a web of skin between them, and the front feet had a web that extended beyond the claws. Can you see that? See how the back foot is different from the front? People had seen the platypus. People who had seen the platypus said it made a living by diving to scoop up worms and crayfish between the long upper and lower lips of its bill. On shore, it used its claws to dig burrows in the riverbank. It was amphibious, living both in water and on land. You know this map of Australia? The red part is where and uh, our platypuses live, as well as in Tasmania. Study of the platypus's inside showed that it had a cloaca, a structure found in birds and reptiles. This is one opening, a single opening for all body waste. In birds and reptiles, the cloaca also serves as a passageway for laying eggs. Further study found glands that were much like the milk producing mammary glands of mammals. Then, observations on living animals found actual production of milk on the surface the mammary glands were found to be small and not easily seen, and the nipples were covered with fur. But even very simple mammary glands became a key discovery because they are known only in the group of animals called mammals. Humans are mammals, I don't know if you knew that. There was another important question. How did it give birth? It took a long time to be sure of an answer. <clears throat> the Aborigines were sure that the platypus laid eggs. Scientists in England just couldn't believe that. Making milk for babies and also laying eggs did not go together in any animal they knew about. Lots of wild eggs were collected and some were even shipped to England but none ever gave rise to a baby platypus. One scientist in Australia did not believe the egg story and spent 40 years looking for a live baby inside a mother platypus. Throughout most of the 1800s, the platypus was in the science books, but with a big question. 
What kind of animal was it? In 1884, Dr. William Caldwell, a young scientist at Cambridge University, set out for Australia. His job was to answer the platypus question by finding several of them alive. After he arrived in Australia, Dr. Caldwell camped out along a river where the platypus was easy to find. Then he enlisted some Aborigines to help. In August, during the breeding season, they helped him find female platypuses. Finally, he found a female with an answer to his search. Her first egg had just been laid. The second egg was still there in the tube leading to the cloaca. He opened the egg and found inside a developing embryo. It had reached a stage of development that he judged to be equal to a 36-hour chick in a typical incubated chicken egg. So the platypus laid eggs all right, but even before the eggs were laid, the embryos had started be to begin to develop. Now all the pieces of the platypus puzzle were in. Scientists had a name for it, but how should they classify it? How could they fit this mammal into the scheme that they had built for the whole animal kingdom? They knew the platypus had four legs and no feathers, so it surely wasn't a bird. It was like the mammals in having a mammary gland for milk, fur on the outside, and as discovered later, a built-in temperature control so it could be warm-blooded. It also had a cloaca and laid eggs like the reptiles. Where did it fit best? Scientists decided in favor of mammary glands and fur. They placed the platypus in a special group of mammals, the monotromes, one opening animals. This just says that all the classes of animals of all the classes of animals, the platypus is most like the mammals. Then it says they're different from all other mammals in having only one opening in the body cavity where they lay their eggs. Of course, the platypus never knew all the science, scientific hubbub about what it was. And to this day, it still lives happily in the rivers of Eastern Australia. How about that? A puzzle of platypuses.